Hello everybody and welcome to week two of digital and social media GBiz 25. As you can see here, the lecture is titled Evolution of Social Media. Evolution of Social Media. Hey everybody, once again, this is Nick Carbonaro, Professor Nick Carbonaro here at Long Beach City College teaching you GBiz 25 digital and social media. And the lecture that you are about ready to hear is on the history and evolution of social media. We're going to go through um, where it started out from, what it is, and then uh, going forward into what could be future trends to social media, as well as different ways of using social media within your business. The next lecture that we'll, we'll tag on top of this will be called Hashtag Theory. And that is an evolutionary trend that happened in social media with the use of the hashtag that changed everything out there. So uh, remind to remind you again, this class is a business-centered class, so there are a bunch of hashtags out there that we could talk about, and hashtags and evolution of social media could go on forever. However, we are trying to use it for business purposes, using the hashtag for business purposes, using the evolution of social media for business purposes. And so with the evolution of social media, the reason why it is so important for social media um, for a social media class, especially a business social media class to learn about the history and evolution is because some of the best apps, some of the best social media platforms only get developed due to the technological increase in society. So for example, 2007 was a huge year for social media as you'll see in this lecture with the, with the rise of Twitter and, and Facebook becoming public in 2006 to everybody and so on and so forth. <clears throat> it only really increased due to the technological advances of our smartphone devices, specifically the iPhone. And so when you watch this lecture, remember where we're coming from in regards to social media, where we came from, uh, and look at the trends in history throughout and maybe to determine where we're going to be going in the future. As a business, you can understand where your business needs to be platform wise, depending on the technology that's out there. So let's get started on this. Let's get started on this lecture and um, see how we uh, see the evolutionary trends in social media. So the first thing we see here is a history of communication, right? Digital and social media is all about um, communicating. And we talked about that in module one about how it's nothing new and how uh, it's just a new form of technology. But as you can see here, a history of the, the communication patterns that we have here can show you where we started off. So for example, right here where we have the postal service, right? And let me let me try to put me on a corner over here. As you can see here, the postal service. Um, I know we have the Pony Express right here, but the it started off in 550 BC in Persia, where we wanted to well, we the, the the Persian king wanted to get their information spread <coughs> throughout the kingdom, and so they developed a postal service. Again, it was a one-to-one -one type of communication, but not, not so much many-to-many. -many. We fast forward a lot down to the telegraph in 1792, but even before that, one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest, uh, probably the biggest communication trend, and I'm, I'm sorry I don't have it here, was the invention of the printing press, the Gutenberg printing press um, before the internet. Probably the internet was the most pop, the most revolutionary way of communicating information. The printing press was was first until the internet came along. The printing press, Johann Gutenberg printing press, allowed people to read the Bibles to the masses and not just learning it from from the the leadership within the church community. And so the printed what the printing press did to the world, the internet did to the new world with technology. So uh, we look here and we have the telegraph that presented information from from one person to another transmitting information. Then we get to the telephone and that transmits one person to another. But then the big invention was the radio, right? The radio was the first mass media communication where it was one too many, right? One too many. Somebody can go on the internet and or on the radio, spread the message loud and clear and everybody could hear. It changed the way that politics was run. It changed the way that businesses were run. It changed the world, right? Radio changed the world. Later on, we get into television. Television changed the world, right? Now you could see the visual imagery, not just hear it. I mean, think about all the the businesses that got impacted by television. You had news got impacted by television. You had sports. You had entertainment. You had um, information get impacted by television. So so television was key, right? Television was a huge huge way of doing it after the radio. We then get into 
Um, we then get into the next phase, which is the foundations of the internet, right? And some of you may be thinking to yourself, like, wow, you know, the internet, um, where did it start? You know, you'll, you'll, hear the, you'll hear the thing, Al Gore created the internet. Al Gore did not create the internet. He did not create the internet. That is a huge myth. So stop that. Um, the foundations of the internet, the reason why we have a Silicon Valley here, the reason why California is the breadbasket of technology now, right? With uh, all the companies in, in, in Silicon Valley and we have that, is because it really started here in America. It started here, not only in America, but in California, not only in California, but our area specifically, even Southern California, Northern California. And so if we look here, the very first thing was called the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, also known as ARPANET, right? Also known as ARPANET. And ARPANET, ARPANET, let me put this down here so you can kind of see a little bit of me. ARPANET was the way during the Cold War, right after World War II, right? We fought the ally, the, the allies won. We we allies fought against Nazi fascism, uh, socialism, all that type of stuff. And we beat out Germany, uh, Italy, and Japan, right? The imperial powers. Well, one of our allies in that war was the Soviet Union, right? The enemy to my enemy is my friend, basically was the, was the premise of that. Well, after that, we had the Cold War, right? Not a single shot was fired because of the cold. That's why it was cold. It was it was standoff between two nuclear powers, right? And so think about communication back in that day. If it was run by radio frequency, if it was run by telephone, to stop that communication, all you had to do was chop the wine off, right? Blow up the communication center. Therefore, the message can't get from one place to another. So the United States government, the military, wanted to create a method to get information from one place to another uh, remotely, secure, uh, securely, without having uh, communications disrupted. So what we did, and I say we because America, we did this. Uh, we went to our universities, right? As you can see here, Stanford, UCLA, uh, UC Santa Barbara, and University of Utah. And you may say, wow, all three of those, but then one kind of is all the way over there. Well, University of Utah is the oldest Pac-12 university out there. Um, you may not know that. And so they have a huge... Uh, uh, military background at University of Utah. And so uh, UCLA, Stanford, UC Santa Barbara, and University of Utah uh, got together, and Utah was added later on. And the U.S. government employed this. The U.S. military government um, went to the universities and said, hey, we need to figure out a way to communicate. And they did. And they did. And these these universities created this method. So UCLA, we are literally at uh, in LA County. UCLA was the was one of the founders of the internet. And you can still go to the school today. And underneath one of the buildings, there's the big mainframe computers down there that served as the first internet um, uh, message that was sent out. And so, uh, as you can see, when we have the internet over here. Uh, the first successful message was login and it was sent from UCLA student Charlie Klein to Stanford and it was on October 29th 1969 at 10 30 p.m. so the internet is really new when we talk about internet and internet technology it is something that is so new to us and so uh, that's the reason why the internet's based out of California that's the reason why it's our culture down here by uh, December 5th 1969 all four nodes nodes meaning UC Santa Barbara uh, Stanford, UCLA, and Utah were all connected, right? All, all were finally connected. All were communicating to each other. And so the internet was really, internet was really created here in America, right? Here in California. And so a lot of the tech industries that we see are here in America as well. And so if we keep looking at this, um, communication does evolve, right? Communication does evolve. And as you can see here in 1969, we have CompuServe, and on one of our articles, we talk about this. Um, 1971, the first email is sent. So that, so that at protocol, Ray Tomlinson, Ray Tomlinson, who was the uh, the creator of the email, right? He 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 founded the email as well. There was another guy that's claiming he founded the the email as well. Uh, who's running for Senate in Massachusetts? Go check him out. See what see what he's talking about as well. But as of right now, Ray Tomlinson is there as the founder of the internet, and uh, we can see that uh, the first email is sent via Ray Tomlinson at protocol. So that at symbol, 
what was said here was that people at that time, the way that the email system was set up was like one big giant mail room, right? You'd go into the mail room and if you go into a mail room at your office, you may see a bunch of slots with a bunch of people's names on it and people put papers in them, but you have access to the mail room. So if you have access to the mail room, you could look at anybody's mail, put it back in their box, see what's going on. That's kind of how inboxes were at that time or mail was set up at that time. Well, Ray said, listen, that at symbol on the computer that we use, it wasn't being used. So let's use it as a protocol, a protocol meaning a rule or, or, a, or a language set up rule saying, if, it, if this happens, then do this, right? So your first name is right before the at symbol, so the username. So if you take my email, for example, ncarbonaro at lbcc.edu. ncarbonaro is my username. That means it's specifically towards me. That at symbol tells the server at lbcc.edu to send it specifically to Nick Carbonaro. That way, nobody else can see the messages, right? So when you have an inbox, nobody else can see the messages. Instead of going into one big giant inbox and trying to figure out who, what your message is related to you, kind of like a discussion board, this was more geared specifically towards you. So Ray Tomlinson created that protocol there. 1978, you have uh, bulletin board systems, BBS. One interesting thing is that if you watch the show, uh, um, Halt and Catch Fire, that's on uh, AMC. It's also on Netflix as well. Halt and Catch Fire goes through this entire uh, uh, history of the internet, basically, from the early 70s all the way through the 90s. It's in like season five right now. Um, I say go check that out. Get yourself a Netflix subscription. Go watch AMC on cable or wherever you have it at and go do that, right? It's, it's a really good thing. But the BBS system, if anybody's old enough to remember it, you would go to it and you would have a list of commands and basically a messaging board system, a bulleted board system to get your information out there. Then we went into news groups or list serves where you have a bunch of lists and everything like that. But really the revolution of when it really started going forward was the 1980s with the home computers, right? Apple Macs, if you ever go watch them, um, Jobs, you know, uh, whatever type of thing. They have a bunch of Steve Jobs movies. If you ever go on the internet and, and watch uh, Steve Jobs on YouTube videos and stuff, home computers is really what changed the game, right? Because now people had access to it at home, not just at the at the at the uh, level of your work or your organization. So um, we go through this. This is like the adolescence phase, right? You know, if you look at the very first Super Nintendo or very first Nintendo or Atari versus Xbox One huge changes in that right the 70s 80s were really the adolescent years when we get into the 90s right when we get into the 90s that's where a lot of things uh change because of this thing called the world wide web right the world wide web world wide web is one of the single greatest inventions of all time um the internet is like an umbrella right internet's like an umbrella world wide web is just one uh branch on that or internet's like a tree one branch of the internet is the World Wide Web. There's other forms of the internet out there, but what we're talking about is WWW, World Wide Web. And World Wide Web is where we go now and it's that information superhighway. Why? Because the internet before that was all about, you know, uh, doing uh, different types of, um, if you had to go onto one server compared to another server, it had to speak a different language. Well, the World Wide Web brought those two languages together, right? The World Wide Web brought those two languages together. And so uh, when we look at that, the World Wide Web was the greatest evolution in communications method. And I'll, I'm gonna try to post a video on the World Wide Web and see if I could put it on there as well to kind of break it down even further. But uh, uh, what it is, and let's go back to the PowerPoint, is that Tim Berners-Lee, a program at CERN in Switzerland, CERN's that big place that does the particle blaster type of thing, atom blaster type of thing. So it's a, it's a scientific research center, developed a way for computers to share text documents in 1990. And they did, they made sure that they shared the text documents together. And they used a browser to display documents and they named it the World Wide Web. And one of the first browsers was, this, was Netscape, right? Netscape Navigator, you hear of back in the day. Netscape Navigator was the first browser to actually go and go to this. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't need a web browser if there was no World Wide Web. That's why when you go to your web browser in the early days, you had to type in www dot. Now you don't need to because it's already there. Um, it's already built up, but this is what the first web browser, this is what the first internet looked like. So let's see this. Let's see if we still have it here. There it is. There is the first web 
out there, World Wide Web, right? Uh, this is what the first website is, right? All this stuff is the very first website out there. And so that's crazy. That's crazy how we go out with this. That's crazy how we, uh, we, we see this type of thing is that the World Wide Web was super, super simple and for a good reason, right? It was in the very beginning, but then that is really the launching point. That's really the stepping stone for other things that got developed in the 90s, right? But the World Wide Web was the single most greatest invention. If we look, we go next, internet communication, um, all these different things. Six Degrees was the very first social media platform that was out there, that Six Degrees, based off of that Six Degrees of Separation. I don't know if any of you guys remember, but the AOL Instant Messenger, AIM, was another one out there, right? AIM Instant Messenger. In 1999, we had Napster, which was a huge thing. Now it's it was considered illegal. Blogger is Gmail, um, bought Blogger out, but another way to, to share information. As the technology increased, so did our service capabilities on these social media platforms. So we have Six Degrees and AOL. And the reason why we bring these things up is to say, why aren't they here? Right? Why aren't why aren't they here anymore? Why don't we use? I mean, AOL and Messenger is still there. You can still use it, but why don't we use it as much? What what are the reasons why? And I can tell you the reasons why. The reasons why is because as evolution occurs, and that's what this whole thing is about, evolution. As evolution goes forward, it's the survival of the fittest. If it's not fitting a need for the business, if it's not fitting the need for the consumer, they're not going to use it anymore. Right? When you bring back that need for the consumer, maybe it'll be used. So that's one huge thing. Napster really was was the legal ethical part of social media where it was like, hey, is it okay to share files? And it wasn't necessarily really the the musicians that had a problem, it was the record labels that had a problem because they have the licensing agreements and they said, oh, you're illegally violating the license, you can't do that. We each have our own opinions on there, but um, from a business standpoint, that, that really changed the way that the game was, right? Now we have apps that actually do that better they're paid services right you have your youtube youtube red your spotify accounts your pandora uh premium account all that type of stuff so same thing as napster but just like a paid version of it right the paid version of it and so um if we keep looking at this if we keep looking at this and we go okay social media communication as as the years went on and let me just drag this down here so you can see this as the years went on 2001 we had wikipedia huge 2002 friendster 03 was MySpace. MySpace was huge, right? MySpace was huge until Facebook got in the game publicly, right? Facebook in 2004 was only for Harvard students. 2006, it became Facebook for all, right here. Twitter happened in 2006, 2007, Tumblr, 2008, Spotify, Groupon, all the way down. And as you can see here, as we go with certain types of things, and let me try to mark it up on here. Um, As we go, we could kind of kind of break this down into little levels, right? So you have Facebook in 2004. We'll go all the way to 2007 is another chunk of history. Probably right until about here is another type of history. And then this is, I'll just kind of put an arrow right here as being current, right? Current going forward. But look at, you have this 2001, 2002, very text. Right. If you look at that, it's more text based, meaning um, we're writing stuff on MySpace. We're writing stuff on LinkedIn. We have WordPress. We're writing stuff. Facebook, we're writing stuff. If you ever see the original Facebook posts and stuff like that, we're writing all that type of stuff. Then we get into 2005 and you could see what the difference is. It's more visual now. Right. YouTube video, Tumblr, still blogging, but WhatsApp, uh, Foursquare, Pinterest, a lot of image based sites. And that's because the technology increased. The iPhone came along other developments in data and in, in storage space and graphical design increase. So a lot more social media communication. Then we get into 12 where we have uh, Snapchat, Tinder, a lot of peer-to-peer uh, -peer sharing, all that type of stuff, Periscope, Venmo, Uber, Airbnb. So now you have this new economy, this sharing economy that's out there. But what you also see is like this like video and, and, and gifts and memes and all that type of stuff. Why? Because the technology is there, right? So follow the technology and you'll know where the next social media platform is. And so um, if we go over here and we look forward, these are different types of social media networks that we have, social media. So we have personal networks, internet-based networks, e-commerce networks, media sharing networks, discussion forums, bookmarking sites, 
social publishing online reviews. And some of these, you know, kind of blend in in multiple areas, right? Multiple areas. So for example, your personal networks, your Facebooks, your Twitters, your MySpaces, all that type of stuff. Your online reviews, your Yelp, your TripAdvisors, your, um, your, your Fandangos, your Rotten Tomatoes, all those online movie reviews, online food reviews, any reviews that you have on there. Even Netflix has reviews. Even YouTube has comments and reviews. Then you have your social publishing sites, right? Your social publishing sites as being um, uh, social publishing such as uh, Tumblr, such as uh, blogging stuff, all that type of stuff. We have bookmarking sites, your Pinterest, right? You bookmark a certain type of uh, product out there. Your discussion forums, your Reddits, your uh, any uh, your Reddits, your 4chans, any any type of discussion forums that you have out there. Your media sharing networks, right? Anything that shares media. So this is where your personal network's Facebook, but I bet you also share videos on Facebook. So that's media. Media is a form of, of that. So you're sharing videos. You're sharing content. YouTube is a huge media sharing network. Your e-commerce, your Etsy's, your Airbnb, your Uber, right? E-commerce, you're, you're buying and selling stuff online with a Uber. You're buying a, a cab ride with a person. Then you have your interest-based networks. And again, Pinterest, Tinder is an interest-based network. Um, Pokemon Go is an interest-based network. Anything that deals with your, your specific interests that you have out there. So if we look at all those uh, interest-based networks and personal networks and stuff, and we could define these as social media. And so for a business, think about all your business needs for this, right? How can you uh, attract somebody on a personal network? How can you do an online review? How do, how do those things affect your businesses? And that's gonna be one of your discussion questions for this week is based off of this chart. And so again, we have our media sharing sites. We have all this type of stuff. And let me go over here so I could close this up a little bit. You have your Flickr. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that yet. Imgur, right? Instagram feed, all these different things. I kind of classify them for you and all this type of stuff. So just go back, look at that, see what's going on with that. Our social networking usage. So look at that. Like I said, between 2006... In 2008, we had this huge jump in social networking. Why? Because of technological increases. But as you can see here, we've kind of flatlined, right? We've kind of flatlined this entire way. Why? It hasn't been really technological increases. You look at your iPhone, it's just a bigger phone with a better camera. That's about it, right? And so you may see better picture sharing, better content coming on these platforms. But as far as the content itself, uh, as far as the tech itself, not really there. United States of America, I just want to show this to show you the total usage of social media and how it's gone up. Um, we have total population, 325 million. Internet users are 88% of that 200, 200, 88 of that 325 million. Social media users, 214, right? Internet's different than social, social media. People that are on mobile subscriptions. So we actually have more people, right? Look at this. More people on a phone than there are people in the country. And the reason why, the reason why we have this is simple. Um, people on multiple lines, so family members on multiple lines, and if you're counting adults and not children that have a phone, if you have a 13 year old that has a phone, that's not being counted as an adult having a phone. So therefore you could have a mother and a father in a household and there's three phones total, right? So that's more than 100% of the families have, have phones. So um, mobile subscriptions are there and then active mobile users, these active mobile users as well. So global snapshot, snapshot, but look at the snapshot globally, right? Again, that same number, that trend of being more than what the actual glow, what the actual people are, same exact number, it's the same trend. So we're showing that the trends are going forward with social media, that more people are using social media. And so as a business, how can you use that for your, for your landscape of your company? Next is a huge one that we talk about, crowdfunding. This is what's really changed the game. Citizen journalism has changed the game with this, where you go on Patreon and, and donate to somebody's articles. You could, If you're a journalist, you set up a Periscope account, a YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter. You create your own content. You send that information out there, and you get crowdfunded. You put it on a place like, like Kickstarter, right? You put it on a place like Kickstarter. You put it on a place like GoFundMe, right? Huge, huge, huge platforms now 
to actually raise money. And so if we look at one that, that was approached to advocacy, social media has become a means for reaching advocacy goals. And it has, whether you're a writer, whether you're a blogger, whether you're a video maker, whether you, you have a, a charity that you wanna do, a, a need that needs to be fulfilled, we view social media as an advocacy tool. The added benefit is directly and consistently communicating with your target audience. Think about flyers that are thrown away, right? Now, I mean, now you could you, you target everything online and you don't deal with those, those flyers out of there. Think about your red box ads that come onto SMS or, or through your Twitter account or Facebook approach. So feedback solicited from audience, it's immediate action, right? You're getting that immediate action back. You can connect small disjointed organizations to a more global network, make it bigger. And we'll show you an example in just one second. Crowdfunding is less costly to set up because it, and it reaches a larger audience. So there's not a lot of fixed costs with it. You get a small percentage taken by the by the actual company that's posting the service, but again, not that much big stuff. And like, so think about like JJ Watt, right? JJ Watt had recovery efforts. This was a little bit over, a little bit less than a month ago, regarding Hurricane um, Hurricane Harvey out in Texas. And so uh, it says recovery efforts from Hurricane Harvey will be massive. We must come together to help these communities. And then look at over eight hundred thousand in twenty six hours. 30 million within like a week and a half, right? August 27th to September 9th. You have August 27th all the way to September 9th. He raised $30 million. That's gotten even more. I don't know what the newest estimates are. Probably close to 200 million maybe. I'm not sure. It's been going on. We're on September 24th. So it's been a little while now. So uh, again, advocacy approaching to that type of social connectedness, right? Um, and yeah, this is what it looks like. He used the site called You Caring. And again, look at you could share it on Facebook. That's the social media aspect of it. You could donate it now right there. You could share it on all these different platforms right here. You could email it to them. You could do that. It's photo sharing, media sharing, all this type of stuff. So using social media to raise funds that may not have been there. There may have been gatekeepers in the way preventing you from raising those funds. And so um, anything out there, to, it's it's like those small communities that would hold fundraisers and charity auctions and stuff like that. Now we've just made it global. Now we've made it global. And so here's the future of social media, which we're going to be talking about. Employees turn into beacons for their brand. Real to real time engagement, real real time engagement. I want you to kind of look these things up. And this is going to be part of your uh, homework assignment, your discussion board question. Driving decisions through analytics. So data analytics as being one of them. Social video wins again, so live streaming in 360 degree, and then rebundling. So your employees turn into beacons for their brands, right? Um, today, it's uh, September 24th. There's a huge thing going on on, uh, on uh, uh, Twitter and all the social media accounts right now is dealing with the NFL. And right now, they're getting a lot of backlash, right? They're kneeling for the for the national anthem, and their, their fans are leaving in droves right now. I mean, NFL ratings are down. Everything's down with the NFL. And the employees are turning into a beacon for their brand. And unfortunately, it's not always a positive beacon for their brand. So take a monitor that, right? There's hashtags going on, hashtag take, take the knee and all this type of stuff. And, and we're not gonna get into politics on here, but from a branding image, I'm not sure if you have a, if your fans are, are patriotic or if your fans are whatever their brand image is, whoever their fan base is, um, those employees of the NFL, they're turning into a beacon for their brand. So whether it's positive or negative, we'll find out. Um, but um, I don't think it could be much positivity if you're if you're insulting the, the customers that are paying for your thing where people are booing them as they come onto the field because they're deciding as employees they're going to become this beacon for their brand. So then it hits the NFL as a big thing. What do they want as their brand image, right? This is branding. Uh, real to re real real time engagement, so that instant communication. So, um, if you have a uh, a problem with your with your phone company or whatever, you may be able to tweet them, and they actually respond back in real time. That's gonna be that's the future. That's where we're going even further. Driving decisions through analytics. So, if there's anything you can do to better yourself in the future with social media, get analytics certified. Google Analytics has a great. It's the it's the it's the number one free SEO search engine optimization, Google Analytics um, certificate out there. You could get certified in it if you just go and take the classes online. And companies are looking for people straight with analytics. 
Social video wins again, so live streaming, right? Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Periscope, any other live streaming content out there, Instagram Live, it's becoming huge for businesses. Think about how you can use live stream to, to get your business out there. Uh, 360 degree video, that's a new thing, right? Where it's almost like that virtual reality, but not really. Uh, you have a 360 video degree camera, 360 degree video camera, where you film maybe your your product your your product launch your, your wherever you're at you could you could do that as 360 and then rebundling meaning companies are constantly getting their packages and then doing stuff with it and then rebranding it out there so facebook did a huge rebundling a couple weeks ago and they added the watch button right that's that's also called a in-app functionality developing their app even further within there so be off facebook watch you know you have company you have shows like the lavar ball show ball and the family lonzo ball um, you could watch Facebook TV shows now straight on Facebook. So huge way of doing with the future of social media and everything like that. And so when we when we talk about all this stuff, when we talk about all this stuff regarding your uh, regarding your your module this week, you want to go and look at all the new tech trends that are coming out. You want to go and look at all the new uh, social media. Uh, bundling in-app functionality that these companies are doing and kind of saying, where will it take us, right? Where will the future of social media be? Uh, because there's going to come to a point where we either have such a technological increase that other stuff comes about it, or we hit a wall, right? We hit a wall. I don't think we ever hit a wall with technology and, 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 and progression. However, we may hit a wall with certain types of technology and certain types of aggression. If you would have told somebody uh, 50 years ago that a place like uh, Montgomery Ward or Sears or Blockbuster, if you told somebody 20 years ago that Blockbuster will be out of business and there'll be a place where you could go on your TV and just download movies, people will laugh at you. They say, what are you talking about? Blockbuster's huge. It's everywhere, right? People like going there on a Friday night. Well, it changes, right? The, the technology changes. The world changes. So when you go and look at that, make sure you're, you're, you're looking at the... Um, tech trends, reading the articles that relate to it that I posted on here, and then doing the discussion board as well. The very first couple weeks, we do a lot of discussion boards, not a lot of activities yet on social media because we got to learn the platform first. So stick with it and we'll get there. So if you have any other questions, uh, please let me know. Please email me, text me, I mean, text me, <laughs> uh, tweet me at NJ Carbonaro, put a comment on my YouTube channel, all that type of stuff. Other than that, have a great one and uh, do this week's assignments. Thank you.